So, idle games are kind of weird. As someone who grew up playing games, uh, not idly, I've always been hands-on and engaged. Now, part of that might just be because I spent $60 to get the disc. Otherwise, at the age of 13, a game cost 365 days or about one birthday. As we've seen the climate of the gaming industry shift towards live service games, though, a ton of games have become free to play. And among those free to play games, we've seen tons of titles coming out with different ways to play. One of the more popular styles of games is the idle game, which which has been around since the dinosaur ages of the original iPhone. I cannot believe people were born after 2007. Over the years, the idle game genre has been massively innovated upon, but by far one of the largest innovations for idle games I've ever seen has been AFK Journey, which managed to do something that I had previously thought impossible. They created an idle game that lets you play the game, but you still don't need to play the game. It's kind of complicated. All idle games have systems in place that help them be playable while you're completely completing other tasks. For example, I'm literally playing AFK Journey while I'm writing this video. As live service has become the go-to for most games, people don't have as much time to play all of the games that they need to sink hours upon hours into. So for folks who have to play multiple games a day with daily quests and also work full-time jobs or have time-consuming hobbies, games like AFK Journey allow you to progress while not taking away from the things that you like to do outside the game. Since I started playing AFK Journey, my skin has cleared up, I'm breathing better, my lifestyle is healthier, and I was just able to finish my shrine to this character that I don't remember the name of. In AFK Journey, you have the ability to idle, but you can also engage with the combat and content in different ways. The combat is pretty strategic and actually requires knowledge of team building and positioning to beat some of the harder content. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So basically, when you get into battle, you get to choose what units you want to deploy, where you want to place them, and which artifacts to use. Depending on where enemies are placed, you may need to configure your team to put tank characters in different positions while protecting the squishier characters. Initial positioning can make the difference between a win or a loss during some of the more difficult fights. And on top of that, you'll need different artifacts for different characters and for different content. And, and they're not artifacts like uh, like Genshin Impact, don't worry. As far as gearing and leveling characters goes, your character's levels are more easily shared than gonorrhea. Instead of having to worry about leveling every single character forever and always, you're immediately given five hands of resonance slots that share levels with the characters that are active in them. Just as an example, if the leftmost slot is level 40, any character that I put into that slot also becomes level 40. It makes the the whole process a lot more respectful of players' time. But I can also see how some players might not like how streamlined the progression is. One of the main gameplay aspects that I think is really attractive to players though, aside from Mirail, is the gearing system. It's very straightforward and easy to set up, since all of your units of similar classes share gear. For example, if you run multiple rogue characters, they'll both use the rogue equipment. There's an auto-equip feature that automatically upgrades for you, and it does its best to equip the highest stat gear, so that way you don't have to learn the ins and outs of stat distributions, especially really early on. A lot of the gear you get for your characters is all gathered from AFK battles, which will happen whether you're online or not, which means that you're constantly progressing. By progressing your AFK level, you can increase the rate at which you get rewards. I like this system for idle games because it doesn't disincentivize you from playing, but it doesn't require you to be online all the time either. That way, there's just less FOMO overall. Now, one of the better ways to spend your time on AFK Journey is in the different kinds of social content. While you can enjoy this game without interacting with others, for those extroverts out there, there's plenty of ways to play the game with others with modes like Arena PvP and PvE Dungeons, as well as a guild system that can bring everyone together for fun challenges and rewards. The Honor Duel PvP on this game is actually super fun. They give you random teams to choose from with like different compositions, and everyone's on that same playing field, so nobody can wail to win. You take your team and build up your roster and equipment with currency for that specific Honor Duel run, making each time feel unique. I think the execution of this game mode is actually insanely well done, and it's a lot of fun. It's also not a huge commitment because you can stop at any time outside of battle and it won't wreck your run. I've always said that what sets successful live service games apart from others is the abundance of permanent and repeatable content that's fun to do. Most gacha games have some form of challenge content that pushes your characters to their limits. With AFK Journey being an idle game competing with tons of other games, they need to incentivize you to invest in your characters. Gathering the resources for investment is no issue because AFK Journey's systems make it so easy to do that even when you're offline. So the only thing they need to actually do is add a bunch of content to the game. And honestly, I think they actually delivered pretty well. Aside from your AFK stage, as we talked about earlier, you have the Dream Realm, Arena, Battle Drills, Arcane Labyrinth, and Legend Trails. The Dream Realm is an elite boss challenge where your goal is to get as high of a score as possible. This one tends to be much more about bursting the enemy team than sustaining yourself. And that means that some different characters from your usual will probably be pretty good here. The Arena is a self-driven PvP mode that's based on your investment. The more 
more that you put in, the more you're going to get out. But the way they handle rewards is really great because they give you solid rewards just for participating, regardless of whether or not you win or lose. So it's not like you have to be at the top of the ranks to be able to enjoy the game mode. Battle drills are fights with tons of enemies to test your formations and sustainability in high target scenarios. And they're one of the major guild activities where guild members will come together to beat tough challenges. Arcane Labyrinth is a roguelike mode where you take on challenges and change paths as you progress. This is honestly one of their best game modes in my opinion because it lets you do some crazy things with your teams. And lastly, Legend Trails is the true benchmark of your account, where you'll be challenged to climb towers with fights getting more and more difficult. This is a much safer way to live out your Kirito fantasy. <laughs> the side content in AFK Journey gives you plenty to do when it comes time to dive in and actually play the game, and they're the perfect kind of game modes to complement the world that they've built. Speaking of which, I kinda forgot to talk about the whole world thing. The world of AFK Journey is so interesting to me. Maybe it's just because I'm not a seasoned gamer, but AFK Journey doesn't remind me of any specific game. The overhead camera angle, the way the world is built to give you the freedom to explore without necessarily committing to the overwhelming allure of open world, and the art style all come together to create this incredibly unique world experience. When I was playing the game for this video, sometimes I'd find myself just running around trying to see more of the map, and most of the time I'd get distracted by mint picking activities like random chests and overworld farming. You can find some pretty cool stuff while wandering around, and it's been one of the more fun things about AFK Journey for me. And dude, when I found out about world bosses, the MMO player in me got way too excited. I love having tons of players come together to be crazy challenges, and the world bosses in AFK Journey are targetable by literally every player on every server. Now, contrary to many of the games that I've played recently that require the effort of a fully controlled, fully fledged 3D AAA title to get literal crumbs of a reward, AFK Journey doesn't drain your energy to get rewards for its tasks. Uh, literal energy. There is stamina in this game, but I, I'm talking about like your IRL energy. Not to mention, while you're out and about playing through the game and the world, you can find other players, making everything feel so much more real and connected. And not just in the way that most gacha players are, where they're all suffering because the new character drops. Gacha in AFK Journey doesn't feel that crazy to me. And it could be because I play like 50 gachas and I'm losing my mind, but I do think they did something pretty solid for the player base by giving out so many free units. You can get over 200 pulls for free just by playing through the game and completing events. The free login rewards are giving me 22 heroes in 22 days, but in total, the launch rewards for this game are about 40 free heroes, and there's even more for free through the game's core mechanisms. While you definitely can spend on this game to get an advantage like other live service games, AFK Journey quite literally plays itself. You can beat all of the content in this game with time and investment. The fact that it rewards you even when you're not around, and also the fact that the game plays itself if you turn on auto battle, makes it so you can constantly make progress and not feel like you're falling behind or wasting time not playing. It's actually the opposite of what tons of games these days condition you to do, and that in itself makes AFK Journey low stakes and high reward. So in my opinion, it's definitely free to play friendly, and it's definitely worth trying if it looks like your style of game. As someone who grew up playing tons of RPGs, I was surprised to find something that felt so fresh to play, and specifically in 2024, something not stressful. <laughs> Loading into this magical world, seeing others roaming around enjoying their time, following a cool story. Okay, actually I won't lie, I'm a story skipper, but hey, if I'm enjoying the game without the story, that means it's gotta be good, right? All of those things made giving AFK Journey a try more than worth my time. I was skeptical when Lilith reached out to ask me to give my impressions on the game, but I'm honestly glad they did, because now I can finally replace Fate Grand Order with something else that actually respects my time. <laughs> AFK Journey is available now on PC and mobile devices with full crossplay, and if you want to hop into the world yourself, you have nothing to lose since the game is completely free. Use the link down below in the description or pinned comment if you want to give the game a try, and once you're in, feel free to use the code AFK Journey Creator to get some diamonds and gold. Thanks for watching everyone, and I hope you can all have as fun of a journey as I am.